back in '96, um, we lost six cows um, due to 1080 poisoning. Um, just wandering into the bush over here and um, picking up the baits and yeah, killing over. A couple of months ago, they did a 1080 drop um, in the Pura Forest here, and um, we lost a, a cattle beast to 1080. Got the vet report done $700 later, uh, and it confirmed um, yeah, it was definitely 1080 poisoning. Funny thing was, was when they were going to pay up, they asked to um, to write the account out as track maintenance not as an animal um, actually dying of 1080. In regard to the compensation, um, basically we've lost 13 deer. When we're asked to put a, an invoice in for the for the deer, they actually want it marked down as stock food, stock food not they actually animals. They don't want to admit that they've killed animals. Um, that, to me that's not honest. That, that, you know, if that's, they're trying to cover up our stock like that, then how, else, how many other thousands of stock losses have there been over the time that they're actually whitewashing? Well this is where our 250 sheep were poisoned. We had to sign a confidentiality clause that we wouldn't divulge what had actually happened and that was happening up and down the country. We had no idea. We, you tend to be so isolated in your little area and you don't realise what's going on throughout the rest of New Zealand. And it was only later as, as we made investigations discovered that this was happening to so many other people and that it was all being hushed up. Just some of the most picturesque country you can imagine up here. And it's all been dropped, aerial dropped, 1080 poison. Where they drop is, they come around the side of the hill here, just between me and the top of the ridge, but below the ridge. And they uh, run all the way along there. Now, what happened is when they were dropping this 1080, I was here and I watched the choppers. And they were on this side of that ridge, which we believe contaminated Phil Patterson's land and also and a stone throw is the milking shed, which is just there. What we have in this country now is an expanding dairy industry, and, and a lot of their runoffs are now pushing right back onto the edge of the bush, if not into the, into the fringes of the bush on these dairy runoffs. One aerial operation, one stick of 1080 poison, goes into those cows, goes into your milk, goes overseas. These are of huge concern. I've had 34 years of experience living and working right in the middle of 1080 drop zones. We've seen a lot of things happening out there that are unexplainable. Um, we've seen a lot of ill thrift in our farm stock, a lot of unexplained deaths. We've had sheep die with 1080, up to 160 the neighbours had. We've had deer die, we've had cattle die. All of these animals had been found in paddocks with traces of 1080 in them. In 1998, nine cows were poisoned by 1080 and their milk processed into milk powder. In September 2002, 40 tonnes of butter and 20 tonnes of the byproduct casein were held in Tikaka after a helicopter dumped 1080 pellets into water, supplying a group of dairy farms. The FSA were asked if dairy and meat products were tested for 1080 residue. Their response was, Targeted surveillance for 1080 and farmed animals, including cows and sheep, may be undertaken should the need be identified. However, such testing is an infrequent event and has never yielded a positive result. In respect to routine testing on dairy products, the answer is no. We promote pure water, our clean green image, our quality food products. Surely we should be testing all product from drop zone regions for 1080 residues, but we're not. We have got documented evidence of deer, cattle, 12 months after a 1080 drop with traces of 1080 in them. What about the rest of their paddock mates? Where have they gone? They've either been on sold or they've perhaps gone to the, or they have gone to the works. Have any of these other animals had traces of 1080 in them? Farm animals, there is really no restriction on moving within, within or nearby a 1080 area. While we were on the west coast, we filmed the JP who'd had 11 cattle killed by uh, the aerial dispersal of 1080, which had accidentally landed on his land. Uh, three of those cattle died in the truck on their way to the abattoir. Now, if they'd survived half a dozen more hours, they could well have ended up in the European food chain. The other eight cattle we found scattered all over his farm, and they'd been dead for about six weeks, and they'd mummified. 
the ones that were that had died in a uh, stream, there were four of them, um, were still intact, and even the eels that had tried to eat them had died. This will, at some stage, enter our food chain, if it hasn't already. And I strongly urge all farmers out there to seriously reconsider what's going on out there. This is the biggest biosecurity threat that I believe farmers have got over and above anything else that can come into the country. The big problem we face is the spectre of 1080 in the product. I've had a, an order of 100 tonnes a year possum meat rejected by Japan after they saw a documentary on the spreading of 1080 around Mount Ruapehu. The advice I got from the Japanese, there was to be no discussion, they would not revisit the, the situation, when they knew that we were spreading 1080 over our Naheri, end of story. <laughs>